conditions this morning, very much better for bowlers than on the first two days. Cool and low cloud cover, and I should think Ian Chappell was delighted that uh, only four overs had been used up yesterday with the first new ball. The first over of the day was bowled, in fact, by Max Walker to allow the bowlers to change ends. And we join play now with Jeff Thompson bowling from the pavilion end, the second over of the day, and he's bowling to Barry Wood. Allowing that to hit him and taking a nasty blow there. Oh, that's a fine shot. Dropped it halfway down. That's the sort of treatment that Barry Wood was giving to Dennis Lilly when he bowled halfway down yesterday. And Barry Wood won't mind those because that's, I'm quite sure, one of his favourite shots. Oh, that's another delightful shot. Beautifully controlled shot there by Barry Wood. Pitched out, got into position so nicely and turned it away. Nobody down there at uh, final leg or at deep third man. And Barry Wood dealing almost exclusively in boundaries. This is his sixth and his score of 25. See how nicely he got into position there. A flick of the wrist, the ball kept along the ground all the way through to the long leg boundary. The wind's just about where he wants it, coming in from cover point. Off an angled bat. Should be three runs in this, no, maybe two. That ball was after it. That field's still running very fast indeed. got his bat back I think probably he wasn't expecting the throw came back very fast from Lily that would have been very interesting had it cannoned off the bat onto the stumps because the ball actually knocked Edridge's bat up in the air. from outside off stump. Bad luck for Barry Wood. A good breakthrough for Max Walker. A very thick inside edge there. 45 on the board when the first wicket is taken. And Barry Wood sadly going back. It was uh, quite a distance outside off stump. Inside edge. Back onto the stumps. So the breakthrough for Max Walker in his third over. Barry Wood played very well. Throughout for his 32. Partnership of 45 with John Edwidge. Drop the mark with a very good looking stroke. And they can take three here because Thompson can only bowl it in. He won't throw because of that injury to the shoulder sustained in Adelaide earlier this summer. Edwidge was looking for the third, but still not quite alive to the situation. Car up a wide, I don't think. So short. Well, he could just about have uh, got his bat to it, but uh, not by much. A 
It's in the air and it's right over Walker's head, just in front of the boundary. Into the fence on the first bounce, just below us here. Max Walker not back on the fence, as all the textbooks say you should be when you're fielding in the outfield. Empire Harold Bird is uh, coming to ask it, only went for four, landed just inside the fence and bounced back. There's the shot again in the air over Walker's head, and it landed just inside the fence. stroke Ross Edwards will cut it off just inside the boundary but they'll take an easy three runs in fact Edwards could come back if he wants to but seeing it was Edwards David Steele has sent him back thank you Richard Max Walker to John Edwards again very very close to that Good ball. Max Walker certainly making more of this pitch than uh, anybody to date. Thompson then going to get an opportunity with the breeze behind him now from the Vauxhall end. Seven overs from the pavilion end. Coming into David Steele. Not too far out of the reach there of Dennis Lilly going through for four runs. Good firm shot but played in the air and about a yard to the right of Lilly at an angle of 45 degrees behind the back. There's no, no chance this. It was turned very firmly there by Steele. The ball going about shoulder height. Plus Lilly. Another good shot. And nice to see the way his foot got in the position right behind it, cut it away for four. Thompson from the uh, Vauxhall end, starting now his ninth over. Well into Edrich. Didn't bounce quite as high as. John thought they allowed it to strike him on the body. Turned that away nicely to a uh, deep long leg and very quickly to Max Walker. There's only one run there. deserved that he's bowled splendidly today in his ninth over with only 11 runs taken from him he's taken his second wicket that of John Edrich leave four wicket for 12 and England now 78 for two really good piece of bowling he's just been moving the ball enough to beat Edrich on the forward stroke and that one came back inside the stroke and I'm afraid that was going to strike middle stump about three parts of the way up. But it was a most indifferent ball, equally indifferent stroke. It's the stroke of a, a nervous young player playing in his first test against Australia. If there is no further interruption by the weather, tea will be taken. Thompson is the bowler from the pavilion uh, from the Vauxhall end. 
They're safe and it's going for four runs. Unusual straight that. Uh, I don't think the ball got up nearly as high as he expected. And that's out. Walker again, three wickets in his tenth over. He's taken the third and Roop is out without scoring. Court Turner at short leg. Cold Walker and England now 83 for three with David Steele 29 not out. Well, that was well bowled again by Walker, just moving it off the seam. May even have slanted in a little bit in the air. Roop inside edge onto the pad and straight to Turner. Quite a straightforward catch, a little dolly. So another good shot by Woolmer, tucking that away off his legs. He'll collect two more from, for that. Which takes England then on to 88. They've lost three men. Steele remains on 29 and Woolmer is partner on four. inside it and it seemed to carry straight through it's a fine shot beautifully timed shot there by David Steele all the way along the ground turned away square on the onside and once again very quickly into position to play that shot and one of the few things that English supporters have something to cheer about Today has again been the performance of David Steele. Moving on now to the 33 out of a total of 95 for three. <laughs> Tickle that away fine this time. Nicely cut off there by Max Walker. It was a no ball, but. Once again, in position nicely for the deflection. So Wilmer has made five now, facing Thompson. And a brilliant catch. My word, what a wonderful catch in the gully there by Ashley Mallet. He's picked up some startling catches in the last tour in Australia. And that quite the equal of them all. Really a wonderful effort there by Mallet. And Woolmer, I think, consider himself slightly unlucky. He thought he played it safely away to the gap there between slip and gully. And out came that long, outstretched arm of Ashley Mallet. And Bob Woolmer on his way back. The fourth Englishman out, the score on 96. And his contribution here was five. for LBW, more in hope than anger. Maintain the whole time in the attacking field. It's another no ball, glanced away, that could well beat Max Walker this time. Rocketing down there towards the uh, ladies' pavilion. So the hundred coming up, needless to say, it was David Steele who made it possible Another boundary to him, and he's made 39 out of the 102 that England have made for the loss of four wickets. Australians wanted David Steele who's had a pretty good series here 50 and 45 at Lords 73 and 92 at Headingley and here today 39 bowled by Dennis Lilly it's 
Steele goes back after coming in with the total at 45 for one. He's made 39 out of the next 58 runs put on by England. And there's the action replay. Well, I think I'd like to see that again because it looks to me as though it was a Yorker on leg stump and he went across so far that the ball actually went between his legs. Front foot went across a long way. Yes, in fact, it did. Just came straight between the legs, hitting across it. That's an extraordinary method of dismissal. And there's Tony Gregg off the mark with a very good straight driven four. Side edge there. Alan not seemed to go across a long way there. It's a half shout from Dennis Lilly as uh, the ball hit him in the pads, but also he was up off the ground. Max Walker again now. That up beautifully for four runs. A few widely directed deliveries from Walker today, and Greg seized on it very quickly. Three runs there. short of Max Walker. And that's... Uh, nothing from umpire Spencer. turn to the man who caught one in that spot a little earlier. And he's given him, caught behind, Rodney Marsh, a fine catch. Diving away to his left there. The same shot that's brought Tony Gregg quite a few runs at that time brought about his downfall. Gregg out for 17. 125 for six now, England. And Lily has Greg caught behind for 17. <laughs> Just off the gloves, and it went down very low and very wide. That was a fine catch by Rod Marsh. Chapel sticking rigidly to his pace attack early in his 17th over. 15 from Thompson, 18 from Walker. I shared the bell in here all day long. A little play and miss at that one. 
Another a wide one too. Early coming in here, just off a few paces. I think taking Adelbert there by surprise. He had a quick look round. I don't think he knew he'd arrived. <laughs> it's not the way to play cricket, he's saying. He mustn't do things like that. And the tireless walker in again. And that must be close, yes. Had to be out. Never really short enough to play that type of shot. And Alan not looking to pull the ball around to a deep square leg. Looking absolutely plumb there, a delighted walker as umpire Spencer's finger went up very sharply. Alan Knott certainly can have no complaint about that one. And that must be out, caught behind. Phil Edmonds there in two minds, tried to drag himself and his bat away from it couldn't quite make it a little deflection going through to Rod Marsh another wicket for Jeff Thompson and this is how it came about ball in one end digging it a little bit short trying to take evasive action there the ball hurrying on just uh, flicking off the edge of the bat possibly the glove and going through to Rod Marsh Due to catch one in the middle of the bat, he's done it this time. He's found the gap there, and it'll go through for four. It's a good shot from John Snow. Middle it, hit it away over long off. That's a painful blow. He's given in the charge. Scattered the pigeons and picked up his second boundary from this over. In all then, play was interrupted on three occasions for bad light during the day. England finishing with that total of 169 for eight, scoring exactly 150 for the loss of the eight wickets in the day, having started at 19 for no wicket at the beginning. Barry Wood made 32, some very pleasant shots there. John Edridge, 12, and David Steele, I thought, was the best of the England batsmen with 39. A little bit of a wag of the tail there with Chris Old and John Snow at the end. And the Australian bowlers really dominated the whole day. It's a long time since uh, there's not been a spinner on throughout a day's play. I remember playing in one test match in Melbourne where just one over was bowled by spinners. That's quite extraordinary there. Lilly, two for 44. Thompson, two for 45 and Walker 4 for 63. Walker, I thought, bowled superbly. He's did the best effort from him on the whole of this tour. He was very well supported by Lillian Thompson, both of whom bowled extremely fast. At one stage, Thompson bowled the fastest I've seen him since he's been across here in England. So it was a very purposeful and very good day for the Australian bowlers. They were well led by Chappell. He kept up attacking field placings, but it wasn't a day of good luck for England. Nothing went right for them. The cloud cover was down at the start of play. There were interruptions during the day. It meant the Australian fast bowlers were fresh all the time. The batsmen had to make several starts during the day and then a little bit of rain freshened the pitch up in mid-afternoon. All credit, though, to Max Walker. A superb effort. I didn't like the over rate today. It was down as low as 12 in the hour at one stage, but this really was Australia's day. Nothing to look forward to for England now on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, except the hope of coming out with a gallant draw. And as far as I'm concerned, the odds are very much against that.